everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in November. I can't believe it's already December, so this is the second to last month of the year. I actually met my Goodreads goal in like September, I think, which is crazy to me because last year I just made 100 books. So you know, I've just been chilling the rest of this year and just trying to read some really good books. I actually had a pretty good reading month in October and I had a really good reading month again in November, which is great because None of the books I read really disappointed me. In November, I read eight books. Two of them were ebooks, one manga, one comic, and the rest were books. <laughs> it's a wrap up that would make sense that I read books. So with that being said, let me, oh, everything was rated a five star and then there was one four star, which in October, mm -mm 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 -mm. that was basically the same situation. So like, yeah, I mean, I've been having some good reading months. I think this is just because I'm picking books that I know that I'll like, so it's a little bit of a confirmation bias, but like, I don't want to waste my time on books that I know that I won't like, and the books that I've been picking that I think I will like, I do end up liking. So it's worked out pretty good for me, and hopefully I can continue that energy into December. So I started off my November reading Escaping from Houdini by Carrie Maniscalco, which is the third book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. This was, of course, a buddy read with Isabella over at Throne of Pages, who like is my BFF. We buddy read this whole entire series together, and it was honestly such a great experience, and it really made me treasure this book even more just because of like the amount of times we would talk about it and fangirl over Thomas Cresswell and like we were always able to have like really deep conversations about what, about what was going on and it was just like one of the coolest experiences ever. Um, if you ever have the chance to buddy read a series with someone I highly suggest it because it is just so great and so much fun and can definitely bring you closer. Stalking Jack the Ripper is a series that has four books. Stalking Jack the Ripper, Hunting Prince Dracula, Escaping from Houdini, one ebook in between three and four, which is Becoming the Dark Prince. And last up, Capturing the Devil. In Stalking Jack the Ripper, Audrey Rose Wadsworth is trapped under the pressure to become a perfect Victorian lady. She must attend teas and act all high society, which is expected of her by her family, but really her passion is forensic medicine. She sneaks out at night to study as an apprentice under her uncle, who is a famous forensic doctor. She soon gets drawn into the investigation of the infamous Jack the Ripper and with the other surly apprentice of her uncle Thomas Cresswell. This case hits much closer to home than Audrey Rhodes could have ever expected. Escaping from Houdini is the third installment in this series and here we see Audrey Rose, Uncle Jonathan, and Thomas Cresswell embark on a transatlantic journey to New York and while on this boat there is the Moonlight Carnival. Every night at the carnival on this cruise ship, someone is showing up dead at the show with some sort of tarot card or playing card as a sort of calling card for the killer. And of course, everyone is trapped in the middle of the sea with this killer on board. And so Audrey Rose, Thomas, and Uncle Jonathan try to crack the case. I honestly gave every book in this series five stars. I adore it so much. Like I cannot talk about how much I love Audrey Rose. She is such a role, role model, especially for the time that she is living in. She doesn't let anything stop her or anyone tell her that she can't be a forensic doctor, that she can't study forensic medicine. Like she just goes for what she wants and it's just amazing. And of course we have Thomas Cresswell who seems like he has this hard exterior, but he's really sweet underneath it all. And just some of my favorite quotes in this book are really touching things that Thomas says and I just love it so much. There is a weird sort of like miscommunication, lo not a love triangle, but like some, some weird like romantic tension in this book. And I wasn't sure because I had known about it a little bit before going in and I wasn't sure how it was going to play out, but I think it, it was like okay and it definitely added some intrigue to the romantic storyline in this book and in the end basically like what happens is Carrie Maniscalco writes about how she was talking to someone that was an undercover cop and how you can sometimes lose yourself in a case and so she wanted Audrey Rose to get lost in playing a part in this case and so for this novel it makes sense. I also love Liza's character. Liza is Audrey Rose's cousin and in this book we get a lot of interactions between them and it I just love their friendship. It's so strong. They're always trying to support each other in whatever they set their minds to and it's just so great to have that kind of female empowerment in the book. Also, of course, we have Houdini in this book because every book follows a real life case with real life characters and so it was really cool kind of seeing Houdini 
as someone that is like on the up and up like he's not famous yet he's trying to get attention and also just the aspect of the carnival and all these tricks there's a lot of illusions and tricks that play into it and i love the way that mime scalco writes about it it just makes it seem so realistic and like you were really there on the cruise ship watching these things happen and you don't know how they're happening and what's going on um it was just really really well done so i just will forever adore these characters and the writing and i'm not one that's like big on like mysteries and like why mysteries tend to kind of like miss the mark sometimes but this is a really really good historical YA mystery thriller that I just absolutely adore with my whole entire heart. And then going on to the next thing that I read is Becoming the Dark Prince by Carrie Maniscalco and this is the novella that takes place between Escaping from Houdini and Capturing the Devil and basically we get Thomas Cresswell's perspective kind of at the end of Escaping from Houdini going into Capturing the Devil and because we are mostly from Audrey Rose's perspective we don't see a lot of what's happening in Thomas Cresswell's head especially towards the end of Escaping from Houdini where there's like you know some stuff going on and I absolutely just like adore this so much so by a rule I typically don't write novellas because I don't think that they're on the same level as a book so for me, I think of like a novella as just like a little fun extra side thing. If you're into a story and you want more content, like the novella is there for you. But like I love this so much, I had to give it five stars because I just had to put my love for Thomas Cresswell out into the universe. I loved seeing his perspective. There were some really great quotes in here. Matt is just like such a good writer and just makes you feel so many things. And I just loved being in Thomas's head and like it just made me squeal and it made me so happy and like it so much. Next up I read the second volume of Monstrous which is called The Blood. This has been a graphic novel series that I have just been absolutely falling in love with. It is so so phenomenal and fantastic. The world of Monstrous is this kind of like steampunky world where there was a great war between the Arcanics that are descended from these godlike creatures and the humans and Maika is a arcanic that can pass as a human and so she infiltrates the witches which are part of the humans to try and steal something from them and the plot goes from there we also have kippa who is this little fox girl and this cat that i love always love a talking cat and the thing that happens with maika is she has this force of monstrum that lives inside her so it's like this sentient old being maika is trying to have, get rid of him while also trying to discover like the secrets of her mother because the fact that she has this monstrum under her skin and her body is connected to her mother and so she wants to figure out what exactly happened to her um the artwork in this is just so so like absolutely stunning like it is such a visual treat to read and i adore <laughs> the story and i just can't wait to read more and more because of just how much of a treat it is like i highly highly recommend that you pick up this series it's so cool and it's pretty much like the type of novels that i like to read but in a picture format is really really cool it's just like another dimension of storytelling that i don't experience as often and so i just like absolutely adore the series because i just feel like it's perfect for me and i love reading it so of course i gave this five stars so after that, I read The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. I read this while I was on the plane on the way to my parents, and it was just such a fun, cute read. And this is the fourth one in the Girl Meets Duke series. Tessa Dare is like the queen of historical romance, which is not a genre that I had really read before, and so I've just been really adoring her books. The Wallflower Wager follows Lady Penelope Campion, who is a very compassionate soul. She takes care of a lot of animals and brings them into her house, and she lives basically in this big house that she is the owner of, which is uncommon for a lady of the time. And because of this, Gabriel Duke, who has basically pulled himself up by the bootstraps, buys the house next door and tries to renovate it and sell it because people will want to live next to a lady to try and social climb. So Penelope is faced with a ultimatum from her family, which is basically she needs to get rid of her animals and enter into society and show that she can be an upstanding member of society or they're going to force her to move back home, which she does not want to go move back to the country. And so she enlists her neighbor, Gabriel Duke, to help her find loving homes for her pets. Um, however, Duke Gabe is a little bit of a closed off asshole, but as they spend more time together, they begin to 
come to an understanding of one another. I mean, you can just feel how passionate Penelope is about her animals and how Gabe's backstory can be really heart-wrenching and but also make sense for where he is as a person and of course the romance is just historical and fun like is it historically accurate probably not but like it's a good time and i just think tessa dare does a really good job of fully fleshing out the characters like i always feel like yeah like i'm there for like the smut but i also feel like it there's a plot that makes sense with the smut you know so like it's just a fun time if you're looking for a good smutty historical romance read i highly highly recommend that you take check out the girl meets duke series and i did give this one four out of five stars okay so next up i read capturing the devil by carrie maniscalco which is the last in the stalking jeff the river series and like i cannot say like how much i love this series like i love it so much and there are just so many good quotes and like lines and literally isabella and i were texting each other non-stop like did you get to this chapter did you read this oh my god oh my god oh my god like what's going on and there were just some twists and turns and i have heard that some people when giving it a rating didn't give it as high of a rating because it was very focused on thomas and audrey rose's romance but like i didn't mind that because i absolutely adore their romance and i feel like after all the development of the other books like this was truly their book and like the time that they had so you can really see like the progression of their relationship and i love it but there is still a mystery present and like the mystery was really scary there's basically a jack the ripper copycat in new york and chicago which brings audrey rose and thomas Cresswell to the chicago world fair which was a really cool setting because we have all this different stuff going on and like also the book itself just absolutely gorgeous like i love these prints i just thought like it was the perfect ending for them and again like i adore these characters so so much and just kind of see like the ending that they finally get for themselves and how they have these demons that are following them around case to case and like it just wraps up perfectly and there were some moments in this book where i was genuinely terrified and i wasn't sure like how it was going to go and I don't know it was just it was just perfect i feel like i can't find the right words to describe it because of just how much i loved it and like that just sucks when you love something so much you cannot properly put your thoughts out there but just know that this series has my whole entire heart i'm so happy i read it i'm so happy i buddy read it with isabella and carrie maniscalco is now an autobi author for me like i will read anything that she puts out her writing is phenomenal the character is phenomenal like the romance the mystery everything i just love it so so much i <laughs> I'm in love with the series and every time someone tags me in something that they picked up the series because of me and Isabella like I well first of all Isabella and I always text it to each other and we're like oh my god another person yay um I it just makes my heart so happy because there's some this is a book that I love so so much and because we did this buddy read together we're encouraging other people to pick it up it's just like amazing and it's like the power of booktube it's so great and I just hope that if you pick this up because of us that you truly enjoy it because it is an amazing amazing series and I just love it with my whole entire being. <laughs> Next up in anticipation of Queen of Nothing I did a reread of The Wicked King by Holly Black which is one of my favorite series and yeah I think I liked it even more the second time around. So The Cruel Prince phenomenal book i mean it's been so talked about ever since it came out on booktube and i finally have both editions thank you barnes noble for reprinting like the people wanted barnes noble delivered and i'm so happy that i have both sets in my collection because i just love this series so freaking much the quote brands follows jude duarte who is a mortal that lives in in fairy when she was seven her mother's fairy general ex-husband murdered her mother and father and took her sisters to fairy she is then raised there with this very complicated family dynamic because she's now being raised by the man that slaughtered her mother and she will do anything to belong to the world of fairy as they are these like cold distant conniving creatures and jude is only immortal many of the fae despise humans especially the wicked prince Cardin. in order to win a place at court jude decides to become a spy and from there she must discover some cruelty of her own to survive in this land of fae so i'm not going to say much for the plot of the wicked king but basically upon 
reading this again i just think i really got to appreciate the dynamic between jude and Cardin and how they're always trying to outmaneuver one another while like denying their feelings for one another their romance is just one of my favorites because it's just so good and i just love jude so much as a character i really really admire her because she is not afraid to be power hungry she is not afraid to go after what she wants and i think that that's what Cardin really admires in her she can be cruel and conniving but she does it because at the end of the day she loves her family and i think that's really admirable and like i don't know she's just one of the most badass characters in ya jude really like makes the series for me uh yeah it's just good honestly this series is just a masterpiece and of course that brings me to my next book which is queen of nothing the third and final installment in the trilogy and can i just say that of course this ending was absolutely perfect it was everything that i hoped it would be i loved it so much i actually read this in one single sitting it was everything that i wanted and more like i cannot fully express how much i loved it i actually still have not written my review on goodreads because i feel like my thoughts are still just like a jumbled mess but it's truly just like everything i wanted out of this series and it solidified its spot as one of my favorite series ever like i just adored it i adored it so much holly black's writing is really easy to get into it really draws you into the world and again i just adore jude so much as a character and i really enjoyed the character development that we got in this novel especially between jude and Cardin, but also just with all of the characters um it took some unexpected twists and turns and like okay let's look under the dust jacket first of all that's so cool and under this dust jacket it looks really really cool in white this book just has it all like especially with like the different um court manipulations and stuff and i really also feel like it's about jude learning to trust those around her and her family and learning to be able to depend on them because i feel like she especially at the end of the wicked king really has her heart closed off because of the way that she's been treated and she really just like kind of comes into her own power and like learns how to deal with her weird family dynamic and it really just is heartwarming and touching and i don't know it just made me so so happy and like i hate when i'm so so happy about a book that i can't fully get out everything that's in my head but just know that like this is the perfect conclusion and it just really rounds out the whole series and is absolutely perfect and the last book that i read in december is death note the black edition volume one by sugumi oba and takeshi obata and this of course was a gift from isabella who is the best <laughs> um and so i was talking here about how i wanted to get more into manga and isabella loves the series and then one day this just showed up on my doorstep what about that so this fo follows light who picks up a death note on the street which is a death gods notebook and you can basically write the name of anyone in there and they will die based on like the specifications of how you say they'll die so this is the death god and this is light and light kind of takes it upon himself to rid the world of evil so it's a really interesting look at gray morality because like is light in the right like does he actually have all this power even if the people that he are killing are bad and you just see him get deeper and deeper into it as he tries to evade the police and this investigation and it's a lot of manipulation it really makes you think and i was really enthralled the entire time i gave this five stars i just thought it was so good and for a manga especially me not being a manga reader like at all being an action manga it was very easy to read and easy to pick up on the opposite flow of the page which is good because sometimes it can be too confusing going into a manga being like a newbie like me because i've never read manga before in my life before i read waiting for this summer so i'm slowly getting into it it's a whole genre that i feel like i've been missing out on my whole life so i'm really really happy to be exploring more books and i think death note is just like a staple it's like a pretty famous one everyone loves it and i love it too like i just really found it like so entertaining and so cool and like that i love the death god ryak he's just like so funny because he's just like chilling there most of the time just like seeing what's going on and it's great um i really like learning the different rules of the death now and all that like i don't know i'm just really really loving this series and i can't wait to continue on and see where it goes and with that those are all the books that i read in november you can check out my december tbr if you want to see what i have on deck for this month and 
yeah let me know in the comments down below what you have read in november what your favorite read was don't forget to like comment and subscribe and have some fun read some books and we'll catch you guys in the next one